Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to Ravi's Focus Hive. I know, I know. It's it's been very long time that I've created any video, but I just wanted to make sure that I have a relevant uh, content which should help you in any way or form. So here I am today with you sharing some tips on how to write effective resume with the difficult time around it's already been uh, three months that uh, whole world is under the pandemic COVID-19 now at this time a lot of people have lost their jobs a lot of companies have gone down in their revenues and a lot of action happening but there is a whole lot of mass that's looking for a job colleges are sending out freshers in the market and a lot of experienced people have lost their jobs so how would you ensure that you are one of those candidates who gets a call back from the recruiters well the key to it is a effective resume that you have your resume is the key to your success so in this video I am going to talk about how to ensure that your resume is not only picked up but also read and you get a callback without much ado let's dig into it so the agenda for us is in this video is to cover different aspects of resume writing and I'm gonna deal with some important aspect of structure and element of your resume what is a headline uh, keywords or key skills that you should put in on your resume there's a very important six second rule that you should follow while writing your resume and also certain things that you should avoid putting on your resume these are some of the important aspect that one should know before you write your resume or you create or submit your resume to a job site so what is a resume well it's just another term for curriculum vitae and uh, you won't be sitting here watching me if I just said that right a resume is basically a chronological order of what you have done uh, so far in your life with respect to your education with respect to your hobbies with respect of your interest and if you are an experienced person then what have you done in your job so far if you have any achievements you have any skills all of that in a certain way written in a order for someone who's reading it to understand it really well so that is a document which kind of somebody doesn't meet you but still they get to know about you through that document now a lot of time people feel uh, I've personal experience right I myself used to feel that way and then I have met a lot of people who, who used to feel in a certain way that a resume should contain everything that we have done or achieved so far so my friend that's a myth it's not right a resume should be catered to the job role that you're applying to right so you might have done 20 things in your life so far but out of those 20 maybe just five are relevant to the job that you're applying to so the resume that you're writing for this job should have the items that are relevant to this job so those five items in a nicely descriptive manner so that the person reading it gets what you're trying to say now moving on to the next item which is basically structure and element of your resume now you've got word processors you got MS Word you got Google Doc you got 20 other tools you got canva you got you got I mean there are so many online tools free of cost available where you can just log in and just keep typing in what you want to in terms of what you've achieved and what you've done and what you've learned and whatnot it just gives you the templates right so that's what I'm coming to is templates there are tons and tons of templates available right you don't have to really worry about where to place your education where to place your name where to place your phone number where to place your key skills but then again still people have errors still people have 
challenge is getting a call back when you write a resume. So, I mean, you've got a, you've got your template, and on the template it says clear, bold uh, letters. You put in your name, and then some of you also put in a photograph. All good, but then again, it takes a lot of space on the top section of it. And uh, just after that, I've seen a lot of people put in an objective, an objective, probably a paragraph of it, which eats up a lot of space and puts in a lot of text on it. And that text is not really valuable to your resume. So I'd say get rid of it. Get rid of objectives from your resume. And I'm going to deal with another, another item that you should add in your resume instead of an objective. But, but now that you've got rid of objective, got a paragraph of space. And how would you want to use it? Well, we'll deal with that. But first, let's let's talk about the top section of your resume. Now, my, mind it, I'm not going to talk about each and every aspect of your resume, where to place your education or uh, where to place your experience or where to place your uh, gender details or phone numbers, right? All of that is there in the template. It's pretty simple. But the important aspect is to remember the top fold which nobody tells you and which is not a, not really clear in the templates also. Hence, I'm taking time to share it with you. The top fold is the top section of your resume. And that, my friend, is very important. Not just you have a bold name and a photograph, but also it should include your headline, right? So this is what I was trying to tell you. Don't remove objective, throw it off the window, so you, get, you get a paragraph space there. Fill it with a headline. What's a headline? Well, you all have a LinkedIn profile, right? In the LinkedIn, you have a headline that tells you, that tells others who you are. Similarly, you should have a headline on your resume. Just under the headline, you need to figure out how to put in your key skills, right? Now, the key skills are basically keywords that you want to put on your resume and we'll talk about it why you want to put key skills as keywords on your resume right so headline and your key skills you know what happened right now in your resume you removed a paragraph from there your name is there and obviously the template gives you the phone number and 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 the email address and immediately you have your headline and immediately you have your top skills what happened right now Anybody reading that resume picks up the resume, Ravi Verma. Oh, okay, these matches the requirement that I have. Let's keep it. Right? That's exactly what will happen. Chances of you getting a call back immediately increases. Now, top fold is of super importance. Remember this, always utilize it in this manner. Now, along with that, we removed objective, right? That gave us a lot of white space. That gave us a lot of space to play with. So that's where we have entered our headline and we have entered the top skills as keywords uh, <coughs> in, in, as bullet points. So what happens here? The paragraph is gone and a lot of white spaces comes in. And what does that do? That gives ease to the eyes, right? If I'm reading a letter, if I'm reading a document, if there's too many text crammed in it, I would probably get overwhelmed by text. Hence, I would rather like to read bullet points. And I mean, any document that you're writing or any email that you're writing, you would always want to put in bullets, right? So people read it, they understand it quickly. But if you just put in paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs, nobody reads it. So that same concept also in your resume put bullet points now there is something called a z readability we all humans have it or the way we read it is and we don't go like this and then read it we go like this and then we go front and then we read it again then we go to front and then we read it again right that's basic in english that's how we read right from left we go to right we end it here and then we, our eyes immediately move towards the first alphabet in the next line. And then we start reading it again. And that's called the Z readability. That's the English language readability. So you got to make your resume in the same manner, right? If you want to have your keywords mentioned, top one, two, three, four, five, six. Not one, two, three, four, five, six. That's opposite. 
So make sure of that. And then fonts, uh, use fonts that are soothing to eyes. Use fonts that are easy to read, right? Don't just bold everything. Don't underline everything. Don't italics, things like that. Don't use all of those fancy things. Keep it simple. Keep it clear. So that's important when you're writing a resume. Rest everything comes along with the template that you you get get to use it, right? The other aspect of resume and, and elements is in, in today's time, you would see a lot of people using infographics in their resume, right? It's beautiful. It's, it's really catchy, but uh, I'm not very sure if you want to implement that in every job role. I would say you should use infographics resume if you're trying for animation or designing jobs, right? UI UX. That's where you can show showcase your skills of making beautiful, I would say, designed resume. So you can use it, but try not to use it for a for all kind of jobs. There are uh, jobs where you would just want professional resume and not infographic resume, right? So you could see uh, the difference here, right? A professional resume has a lot of white spaces, things written in a bit, nicely formatted text, bullets, small sentences. But the moment you look at an infographic, you've got a lot of uh, diagrams, charts, kanbans, and a lot of a lot of all those things uh, you can you can definitely use it but it depends on the job role that you're applying for right if you're applying for a support engineers job role you don't want to use an infographic you don't really need it should have a, a detailed professional resume which talks about your uh, learning your capabilities and things like that so that's where you got to uh, kind of play with the type of resumes that you have now coming coming back to the topic of headline right so what is a headline? A headline is basically it's it's an important aspect of a resume in in today's world, and it perfectly fits into the six second rule. Now you would ask me what six second rule, right? Six second rule is basically an insight of a recruiter's mindset, right? As a recruiter, you don't have time to sit and read resumes for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, right? You just scan through resumes because you've got piles of resumes to read. And uh, you don't have complete information as well. You have a summary of what is needed and probably some key points about the job role. As a recruiter, you know that certain things are required. Okay, I need this skill, this skill, this skill, and probably this much of experience. This is the feel that the candidate should work should have experience in and using all of that information as a recruiter i'm just going to go ahead and scan through the resumes the pile of resumes that i've received through job portals through referrals and through all kind of avenues right so i'm going to review all of that and i don't have time i'm not going to sit and read for half an hour one resume right it's going to kill the time i'm not i'm not going to go through uh, i will not be able to go through all the resumes that way and probably and if i don't do that then I'm not doing justice to all the resumes that I've received so probably I want to go through all the resumes and quickly pick out resumes that I'm gonna further dig into right so what I'm gonna do is I'm what I'm, I'm gonna look at the resume and if I'm getting enough information from the resume without turning the pages all around I will keep it for further reading right so I would scan 100 maybe I'll get 20 out of that and then I will go ahead and read those 20 resumes which kind of fit the job role so that's how it happens and what happens is that in in general it goes between six to eight minutes that a recruiter kind of spends time on one resume so it's not too much of time right just six to eight seconds do you think your resume has enough information if it doesn't have enough information then you then you got to figure out how to put it right chances are that you've got all those resumes uh, I'm sorry, chances are that you've got all those information maybe down in the resume or in the next page, right? Who's going to read it? There is not enough time. You're not capturing it. the recruiter's attention right in the first few seconds. And in order to do that, you've got to put in the headlines. That's why headline is very important. You've got to put a headline right on the top, just below your name, right on the top, who you are, what you bring to the table, right? So that should be there. That is why headlines are very important. At the same time, 
At the same time, the headline also gives you an opportunity to put keywords, right? And those keywords can then again be searched by the search engines. So you're putting your resume in a job portal. The job portal, the better so keywords you put in, in your resume, the better searchability you're providing, right? Your SEO of your resume increases. So it's it's good to have a headline and it's not just good, it's important to have the headline. So remember that. Along with headline, what we should also keep is keywords and skills. The discoverability of your resume increases if you put your keywords and skills on the resume. Now, this is another aspect that you should understand. And I mean, the information is quite available everywhere. And you should understand that as a recruiter, if you are a recruiter, you're going to go to a job search site like a knockery.com. So in this slide, you could see the example, right? There's a job summary that that is an important question that a lot of people also ask, right? How do I find the keywords that I should put in the resume? So you've got the job summary that you are uh, that you're applying to. Right. That job summary gives you all kind of uh, keywords that you should use. So this is a job summary that you have on your screen and uh, it's it's basically a marketing vertical job. And you could see I have highlighted some of the some of the keywords, uh, digital marketing, uh, publishing content, content management, tools and channels. So those are and good communication. Those are keywords that you should put in your resume if you are applying for a uh, marketing job. Uh, or specific to this job if you are searching for this job if you are going to apply for this job you should use these <coughs> keywords in your resume and uh, the more relevant keywords you have the better discoverability you will uh, have for your resume and also it will be perfect fit in the six second rule so your name your headline your key skills i'm a recruiter i see your name i see headline okay i see key skills okay content management good communication uh, tools probably seo scm oh perfect me matches so i'm going to put it within the 20 resume that i'm going to read next so it's important some of the important ask uh, important questions that have been asked us are like uh, should I put my marks percentage in the uh, in the education section or not? Well, I would say if you've got it, you should flaunt it. That's the whole theme here. That's a thumb rule, right? If you have a medal, you've got to show it. What's the point of keeping it in the cupboard, right? So that's what. If you've got 90 percentile score, put it on the resume. If you are a guy with 50 percentile, chances are that you don't want to showcase it. And it's all right. You can put in your past or whatever words come to your dictionary you can use that but unless you have unless you don't have great marks don't show it uh, because if you put in words instead of your actual marks you get an opportunity uh, by the recruiter to explain it when they ask you accurately about the marks then you can tell them your marks and also tell them why you couldn't achieve what was desired however you should also make a note of uh, when you're reading the job summary right on the job portal there are a lot of jobs that specify that you should put in your marks then you have to put in your marks so it's important to read the uh, job summaries should i have multiple resumes yes of course you should have multiple resumes uh, you as i said in the beginning you might be doing 500 things in your life so far but not all those 500 is relevant to the job that you're applying so you should cater to you should use your resume to cater to specific jobs, not every job. All right. Along with that, what should I highlight? Company name or the title? Well, uh, the recruiter or the hiring manager is more inclined towards what role you were in in your previous companies. Uh, so it's better to highlight the title rather than the company. Simple answer to that question. No, nothing to dig in. Right. And then uh, the important six second rule I've already spoken about it uh, and it's basically as I said six to eight seconds is the amount of time a recruiter spends on a resume uh, in the initial scan and that's when your uh, chances of getting a call back depends totally if your uh, resume doesn't pass the six second rule it's tossed 
uh, you don't get a call back and you kind of keep scratching your head uh, I didn't get a call back I didn't get a call back nobody calls me back so everything works on referral uh, <coughs> well it's not if you have a decent LinkedIn profile following the same six second rule and also uh, you've got a good resume which talks which fits the six second rule you will certainly get a call back uh, so super important that you follow the six second rule if you haven't understood the six second rule you can put it in the comment maybe I can create another video just on the six second rule or maybe I can write a, a resume uh, working session I will do a working session if you guys want me to uh, but all of that has to come in the comment section if you need more details about six second rule so for, for me from me it is uh, very easy because it's just it says right six second rule in six second they will read your resume and if it is good enough for them they will keep it or they will throw it so you need to make your resume good to uh, tell the person who's reading reading the resume as to what they want so that's what six second rule is and uh, also you should always test your resume for six second rule after you write your resume read it see uh, just skim through it and see if you're able to find everything that's relevant to the job you're applying to on the top section of your resume and if it is not then you got to edit it again <clears throat> I can also help you guys uh, with your resumes again in the comment section put it in and I'll connect with you and we can we can work on your resumes I'm open to help you guys uh, and girls or anybody who needs help right I'm here things that you should avoid uh, number one and the most important is too much of information on your resume like I've been saying right you might have done 20 things or 500 things in your life uh, so far you don't have to put everything in that in that one resume uh, and you don't have to put pages and pages and you don't have to put a lot of cram a lot of text into one page right always the fight should I have five pages versus two pages and and if you are following a concept where you don't have to have five pages of resume then you will try and fit everything from five pages into two pages and you will have small letters and small fonts and you'll try to put things here there there here and whatnot and you will try all kind of magic and end up with a kitchen sink resume and that's what is called you it is called as a kitchen sink why because after you're done with your lunch or a dinner you go and check out your kitchen sink how it looks like it's basically all utensils dirty ones in the sink ready to be washed you don't want your resume to look like that so make your resumes in a way that it's easy easy to read less text more space easy to easy to understand easy to read and it's soothing to eyes and if you have political views keep it to yourself you don't have to share it on your resume right uh, I, I in fact go ahead and also tell people that you should keep it away from social media also keep it to yourself go fight with your friends beat everybody around you around you but don't put it on your uh, uh, resumes or social media it just doesn't help all right so it could be political or religious views uh, those are personal views for you uh, keep it to yourself thank you so much for joining me today it was a lengthy video but I hope I have given you enough information to build on your resumes in a way that gets you a call back again I would say don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon because I want to come out with more videos and I want you guys to comment 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 I knowingly have left a lot of uh, things out of this video I want you guys to ask me those as comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them connect with me I'm there for you uh, I'm making this channel these videos for you to utilize and to gain and uh, that's the whole motto so see you next time again till then take care bye bye